and welcome to part two of our Rando build series. Uh, in the last episode, we installed the bottom bracket, crank set, and the headset. And today we're going to talk about installing tubeless tires. So let's get into it. The introduction of the pneumatic tire over 100 years ago is probably the single most important invention in bicycling. It replaced solid rubber tires and allowed for significantly more comfort. It had better serviceability and it allowed for better wheel and rim and hub systems. And for over 100 years, the classic tube and tire system was perfectly fine. Potentially getting a flat was just part of the ride and you had your tools and equipment needed to repair your puncture on the road and get back to it. Enter tubeless technology. Rather than a tube holding in the air pressure to keep the tire inflated, now you have a system of a tire, the rim that's specially designed, and tape and sealant to keep the pressure up. When you're riding, the sealant is constantly getting rotated around your tire. And if you have a puncture like a nail or a piece of glass or a thorn, the sealant will coagulate around the intruder and prevent any more air from escaping your tire. And this is an absolute game changer for any type of rider. It doesn't matter if you're touring, you're racing, commuting, or riding a brevet, there's nothing slower than getting a flat tire. And now let's look at the difference between a tubeless compatible rim and a non-tubeless compatible rim because there are important distinctions. So here are two rim cutaways with the non-tubeless on the left and tubeless compatible on the right. We also put a couple of outlines on top so we can point out some of the features of a tubeless rim and how it differentiates from a non-tubeless variety. Notice the valley in the middle of the tubeless rim. It's a little bit shallower than the non-tubeless rim. And basically what that does is it kind of creates a seal between the tire and the rim for that first blast of air to help inflate the tire. And as the tire is inflating and the bead is moving up from the middle, it hits those shoulders that are pointed in the green arrows, snaps into the bead of the rim, which locks the tire and the rim together and prevents any more air from escaping. For this project, we're going to run Gravel King 650 by 42 tires, muck off valve stems, and DT Swiss tape. That little guy is the tool you'll need to remove the valve core to put in the sealant and blast the air into the tire. Connor's going to start applying the tubeless tape. Notice that he started opposite of the valve stem. As you lay it down, make sure the tape is in the middle of the rim and pull it taut as you go. When you get to the other side of the rim, make sure to give several inches of overlap so that there's a very good seal that's created. Cut the excess and lay the remainder down. It also isn't a bad idea to go through the whole rim and if you see any little bubbles or parts of the tape that didn't stick, to just go ahead and push it back down with your thumb. And here's a cool pro tip that I didn't even know about until Connor showed it to me, but you can take a tire lever and push the tape into the rim's bead to make sure that there's a really good seal when the tire jumps into the rim's bead. Now we have to poke a hole for the valve to go through the rim. You really want to make it as small as you can so that there's no issues with uh, sealing when you start inflating the tire. Most valve stems come with a variety of these little rubber blocks that go on the end of the valves. So make sure you talk to your manufacturer to figure out which one is best for your application. And that is a threaded washer that pulls the end of the valve tight against the rim tape. From here, we're just going to install this tire the same way you would any other tire, with obviously the exception of no tube inside.
For sealant, we're going to use Stan's no tubes. We've also had really good luck with orange seal. Now we're going to inflate the tire. You can use a floor pump. Now this is a floor pump that has an additional chamber on it specifically for tubeless tire installation. So it stores it in that chamber and then when you release the foot pedal, it blasts it into the tire. That popping sound is the tire's bead snapping into the rim bead. And it can definitely be a little bit alarming or startling the first time you do it. Here we're going to make sure that the tire is fully seated into the rim. There's a mold line that goes all the way around the tire. And what you're looking for is that it's uniformly around the rim. You can also spin the wheel. And if you see any lumps, that means the tire isn't fully seated into the rim. Now we are going to start putting the sealant into the tire. Use your valve core tool to remove the valve core. We're going to use the stands injector to put the sealant into the tire. It's not necessary. There are other methods to get the sealant in, like popping the bead off and then pouring in as much as you need and then sealing it back up. But I found that this kind of makes things a little bit easier. Make sure to follow the sealant manufacturer's recommended amount of sealant for the size and type of tire you're going to be using because a mountain bike tire is going to use more sealant than a road bike tire. So you don't want to overfill it and you don't want to underfill it. Clean up the area of any excess sealant and put the valve core back into the valve stem and make sure to use the little tool to tighten it down. Now we just need to pump up the tire and then we can do my favorite part, the tubeless tire tango. This dance is a very important part of any tubeless setup. And basically what you're doing is you're sloshing that sealant all around into every nook and cranny of the tire to make sure that every surface is covered. Final step is going to be getting these wheels actually installed into the frame and fork. With through axles, one dropout is typically unthreaded and the other one is threaded. When you're installing through axles, make sure you put some grease on both the through axle shaft as well as the threads. Put the wheel into the frame's dropouts and slide the through axle shaft through and start threading it in. The front is the same way. And there we have it. We've installed one tubeless compatible wheel set on our Pass Hunter Rando build. And next time, we're going to be installing fenders. These are the 52 millimeter Zeppelins. We're going to go from start to finish on our installation. Should be a really good time. Catch you in the next episode.